Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a long time. Uh, I had to evacuate for Hurricane Matthew and everything like that, but I'm back and everything's okay. And I just wanted to kind of get back in the swing of things and get some more tutorials out there for everybody. So this tutorial, I wanted to talk about composition a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a pretty quick tutorial. I just wanted to go over some things that I kind of my approach to composition. It's maybe not the best approach, but maybe you'll learn something from it and maybe it'll be helpful in some way. So really basic though, like I always, I just start out when I'm thinking, when I'm composing things. I, you know, I do the thirds. So, you know, you've got your focal points. And then another thing that I think about when I'm doing these, these focal points like this is I'll think about, uh, so I've got my, you know, put things in these places basically. So from there, I also use size. So maybe we'll have uh, one here and something here, you know, small, medium, and large. So now I'm creating kind of a structure. So these elements, you know, you've got your medium kind of in your large object. And then another thing that I'll think about when I'm doing environment specifically is I like to lead the eye. So maybe, you know, the eye will start here and move on. So maybe we'll think about these areas and break them up even further. So uh, I might look at this area here and also break this up into thirds. So this quadrant, kind of this area here. So maybe there'll be a focal point here. And then, so maybe we have this area here as well. And there might be... You know, this doesn't have to be as exact, and I don't like draw grids over all my work while I'm doing this, but I will use this kind of as a compositional method. And then a lot of this is happening kind of just on the fly. So you can see now this sort of would lead to this aspect of your image. Another thing I'll do is I'll create movement within the piece. So say this was a ground line, or we'll do that in black. So to say that's my ground plane here. I might draw like sort of like a zigzag across the ground and that kind of gives me a hint of the shape of the ground plane and also kind of gives me a leading point into the painting. So let's take a look at some of the paintings I've done and kind of see if I actually adhere to my own rules. So let's do an overlay layer on here. Let's create a new layer. And you can see with this painting, let's, we're going to break it down into thirds. I mean. Let's be a little more accurate with these thirds. This is probably, let's see. And let's look at some of the crossing points here. So we've got a nice focus point here and here. And you could, this is the door. And if you look at this, you'll see I kind of have a Z. I mean, sort of going across the ground there. You could, you could say that I'm following the object, this, my compositional thoughts pretty well. I do have this object, it's kind of my large focal point, and I've got this one over here. So that's it's kind of working. Another thing that you want to watch out for is if you're cropping things along edges, like I'm cropping all these pumpkins along the edge, notice I crop them all at like a three quarter mark or a little bit. There's They're never like split right in half. This one maybe is the closest to that. You always want to make sure you don't, like if I were to have a pumpkin like right here, and this is literally the half of the pumpkin. You don't want to split it in half like that. You always want to either have like a third of it showing or maybe like three quarters of it showing. If you have it split right in half, it draws kind of an odd uh, focal point. It's sort of like creating a cropping point right at an elbow or something along, the line, along those lines. Or you know, if you notice, if you ever look at portraits, we'll go back to this other image here. Whenever you're dealing with portraits, they always uh, you always have a little bit of let's see here we go a little bit of neck or something else in there. So you've got you know your head here and then the shoulder kind of here. It's never just I mean it shouldn't be at least like cut off right at that point. So that looks and feels odd. So that's another another tip to think about when doing composition. Well, let's delete that layer. Let's go to another one here. Oh, actually, let's go back to this one really quick. And you'll notice, like, 
everything's kind of leading to this focal point here. Even though these bats are flying away from it, that's leading to them. This is leading here. This is leading a little bit in, like the ground's even sort of sloping in all towards my focal point. I literally have a path leading to it. And that's what I was kind of talking about with the zigzag. Yeah, let's take a look at another one of these. This one's pretty similar too. This, uh, this actually is very good representation of the uh, small here. Let's undo that, let's go small, medium, and large. And then I have a path leading right to my focal point and everything kind of swooping in here. So it's, this one's really basic composition, but that's, I mean, this is great to show you. You've got some uh, in focus points here. This, this object up closer is showing us a little more detail about the painting in the world. And this over here is showing a little bit less. And then back here, this is just kind of in fog. And then also the lighting is kind of, it's kind of surrounding this object. We've got this shadow leading in over here. So you could say, if you're looking at this, you might see this object first and then flow into here. And let's, let's look at this and kind of broken up into thirds again. And that's, that's working pretty well, pretty good. Maybe I should have had this door a little lower, but I think it's fine. Another thing you really want to avoid too is splitting your canvas in half. So if you have like, uh, maybe let's go back to this. So I'm make a new layer here. So you never want to have just a, you know, a valley right in the center here in your focus point, unless you're doing a one point perspective. But if you have like a bunch of objects, say you've got your, your large object here and then your medium object is literally in the center and then another object here, you don't want to split that like that in the center. You could take that object and slide it over to the side here, maybe, or over here more and it's going to feel a little bit better. The only time you ever want to break that rule is if you're doing a one point perspective and you have that center focal point, everything's merging into that. Let's see here. Another idea of composition that I use, you'll notice here, I use clouds as a compositional element. All these clouds are kind of framing the house here as a backdrop and kind of this, this area of sky is bringing in attention to the clouds or into the, to the house here. But yeah, those are some of the thoughts that I have while working on composition. Hopefully that's helpful for everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, I know this was pretty uh, basic, nothing new here, but maybe a different perspective for somebody out there. I uh, really appreciate you, stop, appreciate you stopping by my YouTube. Uh, if you like this, uh, like down below and leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you thought about it, uh, any ways it could be improved. Uh, if you really liked it, uh, just subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Bye.